Hi, this is Ingvar Johansson, Freedom Master from Iceland, and I'm back with one more game from the Alpha Zero Stockfish match. And once again, we have uh, Alpha Zero with the white pieces. And I must warn you, this is a long game. So we'll see how it goes. I, I will try to keep it as short as possible. But um, as before, we see the Queen's Indian. G3, Bishop B7, Bishop G2. And now we already saw two games with bishop e7 and one game with bishop b4 check. Um, Stockfish repeated bishop b4 check, but when he played it uh, last time he played bishop e7, this time around bishop takes d2. So we are seeing some variety in the opening, even though it's it's a lot of Queen's Indians, I must admit. <laughs> but okay, Queen takes d2, uh, d5, trying to Gain his foothold in the center with a pawn, uh, white castles, uh, black castles as well, and now white takes on d5. That c3 was played, and we see fairly normal moves, and now b4 trying to initiate some space on the queen side, but this will uh, facilitate uh, a nice positional uh, maneuver later in the game. Queen b2. Perhaps landing support to this push indirectly helping the e5 pawn protect the e5 square as well, which will become relevant later. So probably a multi-purpose move. a5 and now b5. And after c5 uh, we start to see the emergence of a pattern we've seen in many of the games and that is a bad bishop for stockfish because it's bad I will try to make it red that's somehow not working for me ah there you go a red bishop so those are one of the three themes that, that I take away from this game uh, it's a bad bishop and soon I'll explain the others rook a to c one was played Queen to e7, knight to a4, and this puts pressure on this uh, pawn here on c5 indirectly. Well, not indirectly, but completely directly. And now uh, Stockfish played rook a to b8. And this move, uh, it's probably best to explain it by going further into the game. Rook fd1, centralizing the rooks, c4, closing down the queen side, and knight e5. Here Stockfish played queen e6. Now, if this move hadn't been played, uh, we would have the move knight takes c4 because of the pin. Then this bishop would hang, but because of rook b8, this enables black to play in this way. But uh, f4 is played. After uh, rook after d8, queen d2, knight f8, and knight c3. So, we already talked about the recurrent themes in the games. It's a bad bishop. And once again, we have a bad bishop here. This pawn here controls it nicely, and this pawn pins it down a little bit. And we also see uh, the queen side completely shut down. While on the king side, who has the space advantage there, who can attack? Of course, it's alpha zero. So we've already seen this shutdown of one wing in some of the games, either by way of sacrificing a pawn and paralyzing pieces, or closing the position down like here. Black is doing absolutely nothing on the queen side. I mean, there's no pawn break. You can't move these pawns. And you can't penetrate with anything. The bishop is dead. There's no knight coming anywhere. There's no knight coming to, to c5, to b4. Um, the queen might enter here, but it does nothing. So the game goes on, knight g6. Rook to f1. Alpha zero starts to shift uh, the pieces over to the king side. Where the action is going to happen, queen d6, a4. Probably not a uh, completely necessary move, but um, probably uh, it's good to protect the b5 pawn, and that means that later you can move this knight, relieve it of its uh, duties, if you, if you will. Rook b to c8. It's hard to suggest anything very constructive for black because once again we see. Uh, Stockfish in a position uh, virtually without the pawn break. So Stockfish can't really do anything but, but sit and wait. 
E3. I think the main uh, feature of this move is that the second rank is cleared for any kind of maneuver with a queen or a rook. 97, g4. This is supported by the knight, and we see the emergence of a space advantage by white here on the king side, looking to attack. Knight to e8, f5, and f6. So, of course, this knight retreats. But now we see, of course, that white is the only one that can do something. Maybe ideas of h4, g5 in the future, or simply maneuvering the pieces. And, and black is really passive. So let's see how the game continues. Queen d7, queen f2. The queen might have either of uh, either of these two squares to uh, give. Uh, Give some, uh, yeah, queen g3 to give some uh, power to the attack on the king set. Uh, rook c to d8. Once again, the uh, we've seen this before, uh, especially the, the the game that we analyzed where stock uh, where alpha zero was black. We saw that Stockfish didn't really have a plan. Was playing moves like king h1, and it's sort of uh, the same here. Rook d8. Uh, I guess you know in the long run you have to protect this pawn so. Probably usual move. Rook f4. Uh, slightly cryptic move because uh, alpha 0 goes right back to f2. We've seen this uh, um, kind of probing probing move before by, by alpha 0. Rook f2 e8. Seems to take its time, you know, sort of like a good Russian. There's no rush, just, you know. Built up the position, maybe throw in a few jabs there where you're not intending to do anything. And that's what's been happening. So, uh, queen d6 offering the queen trade, but alpha zero wants only to tra trade queens when it improves the knight. And stockfish refuses by going queen a3. Rook is attacked, so rook c2. And once again, uh, like we mentioned earlier, the queen side is completely shut down. The queen is not going to do anything by itself. There are no pawn breaks, the queen can't really attack anything, so this was just a uh, one move threat. Now h5. Yeah, not too sure about this move. Um, perhaps you shouldn't be opening up you know, avenues for your opponent uh, on the side where he is attacking. But h5 was played nonetheless. And let's see what happened. Queen c7. Attacking the bishop, and now Stockfish ignores it. Uh, it turns out that if queen takes b7, you have to sacrifice your queen because uh, after rook a8, if you go queen b7, I will go uh, rook e to b8, and your queen is toast. So actually, the best what I could do here is take on b5, take on e7, and take on a6 with some compensation, maybe even an equal position, but. Uh, Alpha Zero thought that it had the position advantage, probably because of this bishop. So it elected to trade queens here. Keeping equal material, but more importantly, keeping bad bishop on b7. Knight g3. This attacks the pawn on h5. And now Black has a dilemma. He played h4. I mean, if you take on g4, which must be an option, but then you must reckon with uh, white maneuvering, perhaps even maneuvering uh, stuff over to the h-file. So I think uh, only white can use the h-file, so this is just one more factor that black has to be careful of. So the machine chose to play h4. Nonetheless, I think uh, perhaps Black should have defended with ace takes t4 because this pawn on h4 now could become weak. And in fact, it did in the game. So knight h5. This means that there's no no way to uh, wriggle out with g5 because we always have a double attack on the f6 pawn here. So knight g5, rook f1, king to h7, knight to f4. 
And once again, we see some nice maneuvering skills with uh, the pieces. If you remember the Nimsowitz Knight G6, uh, E7, C8, D6. This is sort of similar, a King H2. And the point of this move is to protect the G2 pawn, uh, the H3 pawn. Why do you need to protect it? After Rook D7, Bishop H1. You want to play Knight G2 and simply pick up this pawn. So you first need to protect the pawn on H3 against the Knight on G5, this one here. And actually, Black can't do anything about this simple plan. And here, Alpha Zero wins a pawn. So from here on out, it's, it's gonna be really difficult for Stockfish to defend. It's down a pawn. Rook h8, knight went back to f3. Initiating uh, the exchange of knights here on g5. And this is very close to just a safe extra pawn and should be an easy win. So we're about halfway through the game, so we'll try to speed up. Rook t2. Attacking the pawn on g5, this is protected. Rook g3. Yeah, this is sort of the tender point, but no real need to protect here. I think it was more to uh, enable the bishop to participate in the game. Rook went back, uh, bishop e2. Bishop went to g4. Sort of a back and forth here. Bishop f3. Of course, you can't take because bishop takes d uh, d5. And this falls. Rook uh, to e8, attacking pawn e3. But what ignores it? And rook there. Um, of course, if you take on e3, take on g5, which looks completely winning. Um, and if here, then rook g6 is simply crossing because here we go here. The king can't go to e7 because rook g7. And here the threats are, are uh, too difficult for black to overcome, actually. So this is winning. So after h4, we saw rook h8, but then h5. Rook went back, bishop d2. h6. I mean, to a human, this might look like a vulnerable pawn, but alpha zero has everything under control. Rook h7 was played. What happens if... Uh, Knight g8, then h7, and it turns out that you added the extra square h6, and this, uh, well, this allows uh, rook takes b6, and g7 is not a good square because we have this as well, so king f7 is probably better, but nonetheless, everything is falling apart, you can't allow this. So, it's not so easy to uh, attack this pawn. Stock is tried with rook h7. King g1, bishop a8 was played, and note that we are on move 59, so this piece hasn't moved uh, since on like move 5 or 6 when we played bishop b7, so 50 something moves, and only to put it on a8, the only function of being on a8 is it's protected, but it's, it's completely dead, once again, you know, because the only function is to protect the pawn on d5, there's no activity. Meanwhile, this bishop has been, you know, dancing around. It's attacking this, you know, it's been helping here. It can swing around. It's a much better bishop. Simple. Now, um, one might ask, what happens if rook d to h8, attacking the pawn? Then uh, e4 seems like a strong move. And of course, uh, if, you, if you take on h6, I have e5. Uh, this is crossing. And d takes e4 looks like uh, should be strong for white. If something like this, g4, bishop there, uh, we can threaten to win this. And if you take an f5, we will get uh, two pieces for the rook and some weak pawns that will drop off. And this looks very promising for white as well. Let's go back to the game. Knight d1, g4, rook h5, g3. Uh, to me, this pawn looks like a sitting duck. Knight went back to uh, g8 and knight e2. So black gets the h6 pawn finally, but his g pawn falls in return. So white is still up a pawn. And the bishop on uh, a8 is still out of the game. King f7, king f2, improving the king. 
proxy and exchange here and rook to h1 if uh, king takes f5 which wasn't played then rook h6 and familiar stuff tying down the pieces if c3 the king has everything under control here nothing to worry about and this is a beaming once again for uh, alpha zero so c3 was tried but rook c1 and here uh, Stockfish didn't even try to hold on the pawn he played rook h8 if he tries to protect the pawn we have bishop f1 preventing rook into c4 mm, let's try to improve the bishop bishop b7 bishop d3 of course you couldn't take the pawn before because of bishop h3 skewering skewering the rook so here it makes sense maybe to try to play bishop c8 attack the pawn on f5 but king g3 would follow and now the idea is king here so maybe black tries this but king f3 rook g1 king f6 and we have a choice of uh, of uh, rook here or king f4 either way completely winning rook g6 is completely winning so let's go back stockfish didn't hold on onto the pawn and that, that means that white is still only up a pawn but uh with each <laughs> uh with each move of the game we, we sort of see how bad this bishop is on b7 and now a8 and white just improves here slowly but surely and notice that there are no weaknesses in white position this is protected this is protected meanwhile these two are rather uh, tricky for black to defend he has to keep a constant eye on them and after rook g8 we have rook h6 and to emphasize how bad this guy is he can't go to to the ending and actually it's even better to just uh, <laughs> attack the bishop and go here and now when we go back to h6 you have no rook g6 and we will win the pawn here so after rook e6 king e7 but now rook takes b6 now it's two pawns and let's go quickly now we're at move 80 it's it's uh, 20 more moves but they are almost unnecessary two pawns is a winning advantage here for any computer especially for alpha zero and now it's three pawns so just for completeness sake we will see the remaining moves but they are not really necessary most humans would have resigned by now and eventually stockfish did after the hundredth move 100 moves a6 resigns so another positional dismantling of stockfish and uh yeah once again we see these uh recurrent patterns with uh the bad bishop the shutting down of, of one wing and playing on the other and having a space advantage there and just slowly but surely improving there and cracking down on defense nice game once again and uh yeah i'll see you in the next one guys bye bye